Hey there, I'm so pumped to tell you about an amazing new community I've launched called Grief to Growth Circle Community. It's a space for people who are grieving to come together to support each other and for people who want to know who we are, why we're here, and where we're going to have those conversations, all the things we talk about on the podcast. So I invite you to join me at grieftogrowth.com slash community to become part of this compassionate crew. The best part, it's 100% free. And you have access to me in addition to everybody else in the community. In fact, the podcast will be there so you can talk about the things we talk about in the podcast right there in the community. There's also some premium content if you want to go deeper in the work I'm doing. But mostly it's about building relationships and community and about sharing resources and supporting each other. So come on over and check it out. It's grieftogrowth.com slash community. I'll see you inside. Hi there, this is Brian. Welcome back to another episode of Grief to Growth. This is your sanctuary for understanding the complexities of life, the mysteries of our existence, and the pathways to finding healing and growth. Whether you're joining us for the first time or you're a regular listener, I'm your host, Brian Smith, and today we have a truly inspiring journey to share with you. In this episode, we'll delve into the world of Tina Crystal. She's a remarkable individual whose last decade has been a transformative odyssey, transcending pain, embracing love, and achieving a profound awakening. Her life story is a testament to resilience, a journey from the brink of despair to the heights of spiritual enlightenment. Through her personal challenges, including the unimaginable loss of a son, uh, she's a fellow shining light parent, she's uncovered the tools and the truths that have guided her through the darkness and into the light. Today, she's not just a survivor, she's a beacon of hope and wisdom. She shares her insights on heart-focused breathing, the power of the Akashic Records, and the pivotal understanding that we as spiritual beings possess untapped potential and purpose, even in the most challenging times. Her journey is not just her own, but it's a shared narrative of loss, of discovery, and of transformation that I think speaks to each of us. We'll explore how our experiences have led her to teach others about the profound connections between our hearts and our souls, and how this connection can guide us through the grief to a place of peace and purpose. Her mission now extends beyond her personal growth. It's about empowering others through her work at HealingHardest.com to uncover their own paths to healing and understanding. So if you're seeking comfort, if you're seeking understanding, or a new perspective on your journey, this episode is for you and promises uh, insights and inspirations that could change the way the world you view the world around you and within you. So with that, I want to welcome to Grief to Growth, Tina Crystal. Thank you, Brian. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, it's it's great to have you here, Tina. We just met uh, through a, a mutual friend a few days ago, and you and I talked, and I was like, we need to get you on to talk about your, your journey, your spiritual journey, and, and where you are now. So begin by telling us about your son. Yes, Chase. Uh, Chase is, um, was an extraordinary child. I, I called him star, a star seed, star child, uh, you know, from the very beginning because he, his intelligence uh, and his awareness uh, was kind of otherworldly. He was just beyond uh, the norm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was... Uh, um, very sensitive, uh, very sensitive child and had um, so much, you know, passion around reading and, and, you know, history and understanding and always had questions about everything, you know, why, you know, Mm. kids normally do that, but he was like, (laughs) beyond, beyond that, he wanted to know the, you know, the reason behind everything. And so, you know, he was, he was a a beautiful soul. Uh, And, you know, he suffered I always felt, but because he was, you know, such a spiritual being, um, even, you know, before I lost him, of course, uh, that he really suffered in this world. Um, the world was harsh for him and it was, it was tough and he had a lot of anxiety and, you know, at some point he did, um, turn to drugs as a, uh, release and, uh, I lost him at 23 years old. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry for your for your loss. And when we talked the other day, we talked about these children that are that are coming in now. Um, and you, you call them star, I think it's star seed or star child. And I've heard yeah. indigo children and um, the stuff like that. They seem to have this heightened sensitivity, heightened uh, and like they're here on a mission. Um, yeah. Very curious, very intellectual and stuff. But the world is so harsh 
that I think it's difficult for, for them. It is. And it has been. And, and, you know, the, this, you know, we're in the middle of this transformation now. Uh, and uh, of course I didn't, I didn't know uh, that we were going to be heading into this, um, you know, because I, I was a single parent. I was working all the time. I had three children and mm-hmm. uh, I didn't know where we were heading, but my son, uh, Chase would tell me, mom, you have no idea what we're heading for. It's, it's a uh, metamorphosis. It's mm. a transformation of humanity. And, uh, and if we don't do something and we don't make a difference, you know, in the way we do things, you know, it's going to be bad for everybody. And I used to say, oh, sweetheart, you know, quit <laughs> reading all this negativity. And, you know, I, I was, I was just, you know, sad that he, that he was taking this all on his shoulders in some way, you know, because mm-hmm. he was really obsessed over it, you know, like really humanity has to take, you know, a different road than, than we're doing. And, you know, studied the Hopi Indians and he was just really, you know, um, bright beyond his years. Uh, and so, but now that we're in this transformation, um, uh, of humanity, uh, there is, it just brings a whole different um, understanding of where he was coming from. And in, in, in a way it, it makes me feel much worse about that. I sort of dismissed him, you know, I dismissed his, his concerns. Um, I, I could have, I could have done that better. Uh, but I also know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and that he was part of the reason I was supposed to wake up. Too. Yeah. He had he had a role and it was a big role, but it was short. It was a short uh, um, stint, if you will. And he uh, but he did he did it well. He, he did what he came to do. And mm-hmm. he continued to speak to me about it even after he left. Yeah, well, a, a short time here. Um, I think we you, we all come in for for a period of time, which is all short in the, in the in the eyes of spirit, I guess. But for us, for us, from a human perspective, we we judge. Like my daughter was fifteen when she passed away, so we would say that's a that's a short time. But Chase is still doing work from where he is now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And he what he what he does is you know right away he was speaking to me. He came to me um, in dreams. Um, actually, as a child, as a young child, um, so real that. I woke up feeling confused. Like he was just here, Mm. like literally just there. It was, it was, it was bizarre at the time, but it only continued on uh, from there. And I'd always been a spiritual person. So it didn't surprise me from the perspective that he was there. And he and I really connected on the spiritual side of things, even though I didn't, you know, I thought he was a bit of a conspiracy theorist. Um, And, you know, now I realize he's a conspiracy realist. Is mm. what he was, uh, but but our connection spiritually was really strong, so it didn't surprise me. Uh, but it was uh, what did surprise me is how real it was. How you know I, I didn't feel like it was a dream, even though it was a dream. Um, mm. Right. Yeah. So and, and he continued to speak to me. I went to Chaco Canyon one time, and he literally his energy hugged me, and, and I just. I just melted. It was, you know, I had, uh, I guess you'd call it uh, shivers or, you know, I felt it clear, you know, into my soul Mm -hmm. uh, was there. And, you know, so I've had those experiences and I had not had a lot of them, I would say under a dozen. Mm. Uh, But when they're there, they're, they were, they were um, significant. So what you mentioned uh, conspiracy theorists and you said conspiracy realists. What kind of things was he telling you at the time? He was telling me that we had uh, we were we were under the spell of a, of kind of a dark, evil um, uh, bunch of people. This you know is basically they were trying to snuff out our good because they were they were afraid of us because we were so powerful because we were god's children you know mm-hmm. we were divine beings and that mm-hmm. we had a, a that we had a um essentially we had a a energy on this planet that was 
that was holding us down and, and wanted to harm us. And um, at the time, I really didn't believe in, you know, the devil. And, you know, it was kind of more, you know, like, oh, everything's just fine. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's just how I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, and I just, it felt heavy and, and uh, you know, a little scary when he would talk about it. So sure. I'd, I'd say, you know, honey, don't go down those roads, you know, don't go down those roads. And I just kept trying to, you know, get him to stop, you know, because I felt like his energy was, was getting heavier, the more he knew and the more he, he, and he, he would give me uh, information that, you know, was kind of specific about what would come that, you know, we would have these wars that were not real wars and that uh, they were, they were being manufactured, if you will. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, he would tell me a lot of different things and he got to a point where he stopped telling me things because, you know, he knew what the reaction would be. And, that's the saddest part for me. So, but now, uh, since he left, you know, kind of in his honor, I started diving in a little bit deeper and kind of mm-hmm. trying to understand, you know, what the world. And certainly I dove way deep into the spiritual side, mm-hmm. you know, which is why I'm what I'm doing now. Um, but in that, in that discovery, you find out that there's a lot more, you know, it's not just about the spiritual side. It does take in what we're actually experiencing in this life lifetime. And then, and fairly soon after he left, um, you know, we started experiencing these strange anomalies, the, you know, the pandemic and (laughs) that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, So ever since then, it's, I've realized, and I still tell him, I don't hear him as much now. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's maybe because I, because he knows I know, I don't, I don't know exactly, or, you know, he did his job. I think he's thinking, well, I did, I did my work. Um, but, and there was even a time when I had that first realistic dream about him where, where I said, you know, how are you? And he said, mom, I'm fantastic. I don't have any uh, feelings like I need to have something else outside of me, you know, make me feel better, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think he was talking about the addiction. Um, but he said, I'm learning, I'm going to all these classes and I'm learning about, you know, real music, music on the plant, you know, our planet wasn't real. That wasn't real. Mm-hmm. And I just said, well, what, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you that, that, that there's so much more to everything than what we experienced there. And, um, and that you don't die and you never die. And anyway, it was, there was. It, it was a profound experience for me mm-hmm. uh, at that point and changed my life. And I had a business at the time that I ran. Um, and within a year, I mean, I started right away working on slowing down the business, selling it or, or just getting out of it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I did within a year, I, I, I kind of ran away from my life. And, and I just dove into my spiritual work and healing and uh, natural healing, organic healing. And mm-hmm. now, um, I know you you paint, and and the the for people that are watching us on YouTube, they can see that the background behind you is is one of your creations. So, how did the painting start? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey there, I'm testing out a new feature. I'd love to get your feedback on it. It's called Fan Mail, and you can send me a message right from the show notes of the podcast. So look for the link that says send me a text. You can ask a question for a future podcast. You can suggest a guest or just give me any feedback you want. Just remember, it is one way I can't text you back, and I will not have your name, your email address, or your phone number unless you include it in the message. Let me know what you think. Well, that is that is one of the most interesting uh, and cool stories, uh, if there is such a thing about all of this, is that three months before I lost Chase, I had this overwhelming feeling that I I wanted to start painting, and I had zero artistic ability. I didn't know why I felt that way. I just just felt like I really I really want to do it. So. I did start, I started drawing first because I was afraid, you know, I was, I was actually afraid to take the, the paintbrush, mm-hmm. put it in the paint and put it on a white canvas, you know, cause I, I just had no confidence in what I could do. 
Um, but I, so I started drawing and as I started understanding contrast, then I started feeling a little more confident. And my very first painting I ever did, I had this, this, uh, it was in a partnership with a house that had this uh, down in Mexico that had this big brick uh, or a cement wall around it. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to paint this huge, gigantic mural. You know, it was, it was really tall. It was a really tall wall. And I did I, these two big, um, um, lizards uh geckos actually uh on this big wall and you know and i i thought well that that wasn't too bad i think that was okay so anyway through the three months prior to that i was painting a lot and then when i lost chase i realized that this was a divine gift Mm -hmm. to me because it is how i processed my grief I painted a painting every day for a year. Wow. And yeah. every single day. And I would stay up until I, you know, quote, finished it. I mean, I even look around now and I think, oh, those, those are not finished. <laughs> <laughs> those, those definitely need, need help. But it was the most amazing experience for me to realize that I was given that gift because I'm not sure that I could have made it through. Yeah. You know, and somehow my soul or God, divine, whatever, chase, all of those things knew that. And yeah, I, you know, it's interesting because I think we talked about our, our children, you know, coming in with this, this plan and this knowledge, and we all have a plan and we typically forget most of it, but there's some part of us that knows the plan. And I think we get just enough coming through to help us to make it through. Right. Right. Yeah, we do. And, and we, and that's kind of where the, you know, back when I was 19, 20, when my kids were little 20, 21, um, I had children really early and my first two children really early. Uh, and, um, I would do automatic writing and I, you know, I was always very interested in anything mysterious. I, and ancient and mm-hmm. and you know and I would read anything that I could get my hands on you know back then and I I heard that you know if we just you know I'd read this book or something and I would just sit down and I'd start writing and pretty soon I had friends that would come over and say you know would you ask a question for me and so so this mm-hmm. this feeling uh, of a spiritual connection was was early on with me uh, but at the same time I then became a single mom. And, you know, for, you know, I, I had suddenly I had three children later, later in life, mm-hmm. but, but for a while, you know, so I, I was, you know, I had two children, then three children mm-hmm. and I was trying to make a living. So I had to put all of this on the shelf. So right. it's not like I was never spiritual before, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, from, from, from the perspective of becoming, um, you know, diving in deeper and, and having a more, um, uh, I guess going further with with that spirituality. I kind of forgot what you asked me though. So I think I'm rambling. No, we were talking about the the how the painting started and um Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah, you you answered, you answered my question just fine. So when after so you you were doing the painting before Chase transitioned and what was the you you mentioned uh vivid, vivid dreams he was coming to you your know, dreams and stuff. When did you start to think, okay, I need to really go deep? And you, so now I know you're into Akashic Records and Heart Math and, and other things. Yes. Well, when I, so the, the first thing I did was, well, I wanted to escape I because I didn't want to be here anymore. Mm-hmm. When that happened, I could not imagine I would ever be happy ever again. I couldn't find joy. I couldn't find, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't even find peace, honestly. I was, I, and I was so overridden by guilt that I could have done things different and better and you know mm-hmm. all these things that uh, I I was and I couldn't even go back into my business that I had uh, that I'd owned a business and um so for the next year I basically you know sort of you know babied my business through as best I could but I didn't really want to be there um and I and I kind of left it you know I got it to a point where I could close it and I moved to Arizona from Washington state and I basically ran away from everything. So that started, you know, 
because I didn't know how to deal with the world anymore. I didn't know how, because everything seemed so surface oriented. It, you know, people didn't understand that life is so much different than we were pretending it to be. We, we thought it was about, you know, making a living and, you know, eating good food and going shopping or whatever, mm-hmm. traveling, whatever it was. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't be there anymore. So I had to leave that, even though by that time I had a couple of grandchildren already, uh, uh, and but I still couldn't handle that life as usual, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. So I moved to Arizona and I, and I, you know, sold my house and, you know, gave up my business and I had enough money where I could just dive into my own heart, you know, and go inside of myself. And in that, um, I found HeartMath, which uh, is a company that uh, organization, nonprofit organization that teaches you basically how to uh, um, be more resilient in, in life, right? And so I became certified. And even going through the training, I thought, you know, because part of part of the, the, the resilience comes from being able to imagine and feel uh, high vibration emotions, which mm-hmm. is love and peace and joy, you know, and um, compassion, those, those kinds of feelings. And I could not, I could not even go there because I was in grief and anxiety and even somewhat anger towards myself and depression and the low, the low vibration. Mm-hmm. And um, so I learned uh, and I also read a, 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 a was you know I read a lot of books, but I read an amazing book called Power Versus Force, and that helped me understand the difference between high vibrations and low vibrations. And so I was learning at a really fast pace that I could not sustain life well if I stayed in this state of of grief, mm-hmm. basically, mm-hmm. and sadness. So when I when I became certified, that's when I worked through and found that. Um, finally found that I could remember and could bring myself back into my heart and bring myself back into my joy. You know, it, it wasn't joy right away. It was peace. It started right. with peace Right. Uh, that I could be peaceful with not having my son anymore. And I could be bring peace to that. So I started just, you know, looking, reading every book I could find on, on, I was interested in organic healing and uh, tuning forks and somehow I I was so focused that I thought healing had to do with color and sound and vibration and I couldn't get off that feeling that that was the truth and so I bought every book I could to try to understand it um, and then you know came, went back to my Akasha or to my uh, automatic writing and then came across Akashic Records which I'd never even heard of before mm-hmm. and, and it just stuck with me you know I was immediately able to connect and it felt, it almost felt like home. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it felt right. And I felt like this is what I'm supposed to be doing, but I need to do it with the heart because I want to help people with this heart-based living. And mm-hmm. and there was a point where I wanted to do something, you know, like, you know, kind of like what you're doing. I wanted to help parents, uh, but I didn't know how. I didn't mm-hmm. know how to do that, who had lost, you know, their child. Because I felt like I'd been through such, a deep place um, and finding my way out felt like I needed to share that. Um, yeah, yeah. So now I can do that with you. So, yeah, you know, yeah. bringing that all into, into a beautiful place that I have not been able to do um, before now, other than with my work with the Akashic Records and HeartMath. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that. And I think it's really important. And remind us again, how long ago has it been since Chase passed? Uh, it was 2014, so okay. this year, August this year, it'll be 10 years. Yeah, so you're you're coming up on 10 years. I'm coming up on nine years, and that feeling that you have when, as you said, I'm never going to feel joy again. I, mean, I can't even feel peace. Um, that feeling that there's just something wrong with the world and it'll never be right. And you look around, and you wonder why everybody else doesn't see everything that's wrong. So I, I, I. I your story gives people hope. And I want to say to people that are listening that are early, because I have a lot of parents who listen that are early on their journey, they they might think, well, I can never get to where she is. 
but I want people to know that that's not where we start when our children cross over. We don't we don't start there. We, we it starts with just that spark of hope that maybe I can get there one day. Yes, and it and it's a, I I believe it's a soul journey. I also believe that uh, that he and he and he told me this on one of those occasions where he visited me that he had uh, that he was supposed to leave at an earlier age and he told me it was supposed to be 14. Hmm. He knew that I couldn't handle that, that I could not, I was not ready for that. Um, and he also told me that, um, that his, his journey here, his purpose um, here was to help wake people up uh, mm -hmm. to the, uh, um, what was to what was coming and that we needed to get ourselves right. We need to understand our power, uh, our divinity. And um, he also, you know, basically in, in some of those messages uh, said that he was, um, you know, able to put off leaving uh, because he, he felt that he did all he could do, that he his purpose was finished and that he was in a, a peace, a complete peace. Uh, that you know, he, he did what he needed to do when he came here and that now it's up to me and for me to look inward um, and for me to, to see how his leaving will help me do the work forward that, that, that he was handing off to me. And, and he was handing it off to me because it was his catalyst, the catalyst of him leaving my life that pushed me into doing more with my life if that makes sense. And sometimes we need that, um, that, that really big, you know, in your face, you know, something that you can't, that, that, that just makes you fall to your knees. Yes. Yes. And I know that sometimes when people first hear the concept that we're talking about, um, and I've heard parent because as a parent, when our child crosses and it's almost universal, we feel some form, of, some form of guilt. I mean, I've talked to hundreds or thousands of parents who've lost children and that guilt is almost universal. I should have done something different. I could have done something different. And then they hear this concept of soul planning and then they go, oh, well, you're saying it's my fault that my my child died early. And they'll, they'll actually take it that way. Like it's like, you know, they sacrificed for me, but it's a, it's a mutual thing. It's a, it's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a soul plan. And it's based upon the fact that we know that our children didn't die they they their lives weren't cut short their lives continue and they continue to work with us from where they are so for someone hearing this and going well then it's my fault that my 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 daughter died at you know at 12 or whatever no it doesn't mean it's your, your fault it's an agreement that we have that's right it's exactly an agreement and it, and it also goes further to an agreement not with just them but an agreement that we make with ourselves with our soul our soul agreement uh, before we came here is to experience many of the things that we're experiencing. I mean, certainly we have free will and we can do anything. We can choose to go any direction that we want to mm -hmm. uh, once we're here, but uh, we are here very specifically to, uh, uh, to have a, first of all, an expansion of the soul to experience certain things that we can't experience without a body. Uh, and, and, you know, that's just, you know, that's just the first thing right there is is a lot of souls light beings i call them mm -hmm. um want to come here and especially during this time because it is a a pivotal moment in in humanity um and when we come here you know a lot of people especially when i go through the akashic records with people they've had terrible experiences and you know and they say why you know and they and they feel like a victim and the record keepers are very clear you know this is this is something you choose chose whether you chose it before you came here or whether you chose the path after you came here with through free will this is what you chose to experience and you're still here so it it does make you stronger what doesn't kill you makes you stronger mm -hmm. and there is a moment uh, where we have to realize that we are completely in charge of everything that we do. We are 
you know, we are the ones. Yes, things happen. And yes, you could get hit by a car tomorrow, but you also were placed there in that spot mm -hmm. um, at that moment. So taking that responsibility for myself uh, was a huge step in me allowing myself to, to be free of, of the pain of feeling like, um, you know, I was a victim uh, yeah. in some way. Yeah, I think that's a very important concept, and and it's a very jarring concept when people first hear it. You know that we are we are responsible for our situations because again, people will, will take that to say, "Well, you're saying I'm to blame," and it's not that at all. It's that we we do come to have these experiences, and and we we think while we're here, it's like, well, why would I want to have this experience? Why would I want to go through, you know, this? But then we see from people like yourself who. Have, You've grown from this experience and you're doing things you wouldn't be doing if it weren't for Chase, uh, Chase's passing. That's exactly right. I, I don't believe that I would be. I, I think that at some point I probably would have, you know, realized that I was on a, a path of, of um, I don't know, materialism might be the best word to, to put it. You know, I mean, I was, you know, in, in a business and enjoyed making money and you know, and I, I was kind of putting my, you know, I had a nice house and mm -hmm. I, I was putting my, my uh, uh, life more in, in, in the here and now and the three, third dimensional space sure. rather yeah. than what I came here to do. So I think eventually I would have sort of seen it, but I maybe not have done anything about it. But the catalyst of him leaving made me do something about it right then. Right. I literally... I really couldn't go forward because I saw everything clearly. I even I had a boyfriend at the time that I thought I was madly in love with. And all of a sudden I could see that he was not the person for me. And it was just, it was almost like within a week of all of this happening, I could see everything clearly. And I, I knew everything I was doing, the house, I had to sell my house. I had everything I was doing was not in congruence with my soul it was not I was not in balance with my soul and mm -hmm. uh, and until I cha made changes which I couldn't make them fast enough because I had a lot of anchors you know holding me um, I couldn't make them fast enough but until I, I knew until I'd made all those changes I would there was no way uh, I was going to be able to you know manage in that world anymore I, I had to I had to do what I did and you know and I spent all my money you know, living a life of reading and, and absorbing and, you know, you know, which didn't do me any favors now, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm tired, but, uh, but I, would I change it? Absolutely would not change it. You know, I wouldn't change it. Yeah. And that I, I, is saying something. Yeah, absolutely. And I, that is saying a lot, you know, um, because it, again, it's, it, it takes a while to get to that point, I think. Um, oh, yeah. because to, for, for you, for you to be able to say, I recognize the the gift and what's happened, even, even something as tragic as, as losing a child at, at a very young age, that there's something about that, that, that set me on this journey. And again, that even that word loss, you know, Chase is still with you. And we talked about it before we start recording, you know, Chase is for people, again, people that are watching on YouTube, Chase is actually behind Tina in the picture. Um, and, and tell how that came about. Yes. Yeah, so this is one of the first paintings that I, that, that I had. Um, and, uh, as I was painting this, I think, let's see, one way or another, it's, let's say, um, uh, anyway, it, it was a tunnel mm -hmm. uh, behind me. I think you can sort of see it. There. There yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um, and a doorway to, you know, it, and I kept painting these kinds of things, doorways, portals, openings, you know, because it just, that's what was coming to me. Mm -hmm. And as I was painting this painting, um, I, I started realizing that, let's see, over on this side, um, there was sort of a face that was emerging just, just by, you know, moving the brush around and doing whatever, there was a face emerging. And I, you know, I'd just kind of stand back and I'd look at it and I'm like, well, isn't that interesting? And and as it, you know, as I kind of ignore, ignore it for a while, I didn't want to fix it because I could see that there was a face there. Mm. Um, now it wasn't quite as 
clear as this face um, because after I, when I was coming to the point where I was finishing it, there was another one, which is on this side up that way mm -hmm. uh, that looked like, you know, some, anyway, these things just appeared mm -hmm. in, in, in me just painting. And I, I, and so then when I realized that this one over here, here uh, was my, was looking like my son, I did, I did go in and, you know, made his eye green, which is what it was. And, mm -hmm. but his hair was really sand, sandy, curly. That was already there. His nose was there and his mouth was there. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't do anything else to it, but I did make his eye a little more um, uh, obvious, mm -hmm. you know, uh, on purpose, but otherwise it just sort of appeared. And this is another one of those things where, because he was my biggest fan. When I was the three months before, when before his passing, uh, his transformation, I'm just going to say, mm -hmm. um, he um, he was he said, "Mom, you really you you really have something here. I think you could be good." And I'd say, "Oh no, you know, oh, you know, I'm just playing. This is you know, I'm just I'm just kind of learning." He's no 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 this no this is you need to pay attention to this. He was like the only one that was really encouraging me. Whereas you know, some of my other you know family members would just sort of look at stuff and they'd laugh. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, that was funny. Um, you know, uh, because I was trying, but you no, know, he, he, he was my biggest fan. And, and um, so I felt like this was his, mo you know, he came in and, and he said, uh, and I see this, let's see this oh, painting, that one mm -hmm. as it's not going to be a fun journey. This is not going to be fun. Like this, there's the scary, the scary things that are come that are, that are going to come, but you're mm -hmm. going to get through it because look at those other doors behind you. I saw this when I finished this. I thought it was my most profound uh, painting because mm -hmm. the, of the of of those things I just said. You know, there's that door at the end that leads to this beautiful, mis mysterious, possibly wonderful place. Um, but you've got to go through some stuff first, which is yeah. what I think's going on with humanity. And, you know, I was going through that on a microcosmic scale. And I think humanity is going through this, you know, on a, a on a, you know, large scale. Yeah, I think the, the, the journey of the soul that we have as individuals is, is echoed in the collective. So yes. as we as we go through, you know, the journey isn't easy. We go through hardships as as individuals. Humanity goes through hardships, but ultimately, hopefully, we we rise uh, rise to the occasion. I know that's something that you know you and I both are working our best to try to make happen. Stay with us; we'll be right back. Hi there! I'm really excited to tell you about my latest ebook. It's four lessons that you can learn from the near death experience without going through all the trouble of dying to learn them. I've been studying NDEs for several years now. I am completely convinced that not only are they 100% real, but that there's some very universal wisdom that we can get from the near-death experience. And I've distilled that down in this book into four short lessons. And I've also given you all the reasons why I believe the NDEs are absolutely real. So go to www.grieftogrowth.com slash NDE lessons to pick it up for free www.grief the number two growth.com slash nde lessons i hope you enjoy it absolutely absolutely and what's so interesting is that i had so i knew i knew so much even though even when i was painting all these paintings that first year mm -hmm. after i lost chase um and after that year by the way i i kind of lost the the desire to paint i tried to paint a couple of times and i just didn't it did wasn't there for me really mm -hmm. so i really knew that this was a this was a gift for me to process you know this grief and all the feelings that i had and um and i couldn't i, I gave away a few paintings i've had people ask me if they could buy paintings um i wouldn't and i wouldn't sell them uh there's something there was something that just said no i you know not only will i not sell them because money feels different to me now. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't feel, I know it's important because it's, you know, that's what we run on, but it doesn't have a meaning for me at all. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like I wanted to put the paintings where they meant money, you know, where mm -hmm. they, some, they symbolically meant money. 
So I wouldn't sell them, but I have a friend, actually, it's the mutual friend that, that you and I met through, mm-hmm. uh, um, that said, you know, you're never going to, you're never going to get rid of those paintings. And, and it's true. I have them everywhere because it reminds me of a time that was so transformative for me mm-hmm. and, and such a important time for me to learn who, who I was, uh, that I don't know that I could, you know, like I said, maybe five paintings I've, I've given away when people, when I, I felt the feeling that they would really appreciate them, you know, for some reason, uh, than I would, but, uh, it's interesting because I have them everywhere in my house and it's not because I'm proud of, you know, I'm so artistic because that's not the case. It's because it reminds me every day to look into my soul, right. to think about what it is that got me here and what I lost that got me here, but what I gained mm. uh, as well. And so, yeah. you know, for, for whatever reason, it's, they, they mean a lot to me. Oh, sure they do. I'm sure they do. So tell me about the work that you're doing now. So, uh, it's for people that don't know. First, let's just start with uh, let's start with heart math. Yeah. So what is it you're doing with heart math? Well, I've just integrated it. You know, I so heart math as a certified heart math uh, uh, um, is a guide, uh, if you will. You know, we teach people how to become more resilient. And um, it's it's basically a, a, it's putting together breath and um, breathing into the heart space, and it's uh, also at the same time feeling and visualizing um, a high vibrational. Uh, um, there's a lot more to it than this. This is the simplified form, sure. but uh, a high vibrational emotion, um, because then that that helps our autonomic nervous system. Uh, all feel that everything is okay, everything's good, right? Because we have a tendency to um, to breathe shallow. Um, we're all just inherently stressed out, you know, kind of by design, you know, if if we really go deep into it. But everybody's inherently stressed out and you know, trying to make it in this world whatever way they can. Mm-hmm. So we breathe mm-hmm. shallow. We Our body's always in stress mode. So this is just a quick, it's not like you have to sit down and go into meditation, which I've done too. It's harder for me to meditate uh, because I'm a mover. You know, I, 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 it's hard hard for me to sit for that long. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, even doing the Akashic records, I have to sit, you know, for quite a long time. But um, anyway, this, I found that you in three to five minutes, you can sort of re-energize, you know, uh, uh, charge your batteries, if you will within a three to five minute time frame, And when you learn to do this and do it a few times, you can do this with your eyes open, which means you can do this when you're driving. You know, mm. it's basically, you know, breathing in five seconds in to your heart space, five seconds out. And, and then, you know, and, and there's a couple of steps after that, which is, you know, bringing in this vision, uh, this idea, this feeling uh, of a good positive um, time in your life or something that, makes you happy, you know, being on a hammock on the beach or whatever makes you feel a high frequency emotion. Mm. And then the breath sort of, and I've sort of changed it. So, so I'm not officially a heart math representative any at at this point, uh, Mm. because I choose to teach this for free. I choose to, um, to incorporate it into the Akashic records, uh, 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 teachings or or, uh, sessions that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think everyone knows needs to know how to do this because we're helping relax our bodies. We're helping go find, find our, our peaceful place in our soul, which I believe helps us allow the messages coming in from our, from our ancestors, from our lost, those we've lost from our guides, our angels, uh, and more, um, mm-hmm. because you have to find that peaceful place. In order to do it, and you can literally find wisdom in that three minutes when you're about to go into a meeting, or you're about to make a big decision, or whatever it is, um, or or just get you, you know you're about to do something that's going to feel stressful. You can go into this place, and it is literally one of the few things that helped me, you know, pull myself out of this feeling of um, that I was never going to 
get out of, you know, right. of this right. low grief feeling. And it helped me tremendously, but now it helps me as long as I remember to do this, but, you know, um, but it, it brings a sense of balance uh, into your life and resilience. So you can bounce back quickly when things do happen. Mm -hmm. You find, you find this place and you find it in your heart and you, and you trust and you believe that you're strong. That's part of it for me, right? I have to trust and believe that I am not weak and that I am not a, a, you know, rag doll and I can't, can't be, you know, pushed around and I'm not a victim. So for me, that's, that's my choice of how I bring this heart math, uh, heart, I call it the heart focused breathing. And once a month I do a, um, a free session where we, you know, we do it together. Anybody that wants to join, I'm on zoom and, and I do it. And then I have a PDF that tells you how to do it. that people can download. So okay. I want everybody to know this. And people can find that at your website. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then um, tell me about the Akashic records. Now, I think a lot of us have heard of the Akashic records, but there's a lot of confusion as to what they are and how they benefit us. So tell, tell me about that. Well, the Akashic Records is actually, it's referenced many times in the Bible. Uh, 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 Edward, Edgar Casey, uh, Edgar Casey, yeah. Um, Casey, mm -hmm. That's where he went when he did all of his uh, sessions for healing. And he was in the Akashic Records. That's well known. Um, the Akashic Records, uh, from my perspective, and there's, there's different, you can get, I have several books and, and they don't all agree on what it is, but uh, I believe that it is a realm uh, that is a library of all souls on, you know, in, in the universe uh, and all lives that those souls have experienced. And even to the point where, you know, city, a city or a, you know, you can go beyond souls, uh, but you know, I, I focus on the souls, um, where you can see all the major, um, events of, of any life, uh, but it's, and, it, and it's guarded, you know, it's a library, but it's guarded. So I could not go in and see someone's Akashic records unless, uh, I have been given permission. And that's part of the process of the Akashic records. You have hmm. to have permission. You can't, abuse it that's what i loved about it you know it's not like a psychic that can go in and say oh well you know i i didn't really like that part so this this felt like you know because we're going through the gatekeepers through the library of souls um and we're asking permission for whatever that person needs to hear at that moment which means no two sessions are ever alike Mm -hmm. uh, no two moments. I mean, no two moments, you know, I, I, I had experience where, you know, they were saying one thing in the beginning of a session. And then by the end, they kind of were saying that the person already worked through it, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it's, it's, you know, live and in, in that moment. So it's, to me, it was when I could, because I started doing the automatic writing again, and then I morphed into the Akashic records, mm -hmm. um, because I, I needed to know more and I didn't know how to get more information and I wasn't getting it through my meditations. You know, I wanted information, um, about everything. I want to mm -hmm. know about everything. And yeah. so it helped me to understand more about Chase, uh, and our relationship and how we made those contract, uh, um, agreements, you know, in the beginning. And, um, uh, it, it helped me on many, many levels. Uh, I did. I don't. I don't ask about myself very much in the beginning. I did, but now I. I really don't because I don't really know why. Um, I don't really know why I don't. But I just. I really don't ask anymore. I think it's. Uh, it, I'm. I'm just more interested in helping other people. I guess I don't know. Hmm. So, what types of things can can an Akashic Records session help with? What kind of things can help us resolve? Uh, it, it can be anything from, well, so this, this weekend I have, uh, I have a session with a lady that wants to clear some, uh, energy, which, you know, I call DNA, uh, memory, 
um, about why she's afraid of heights and afraid of, of water. So that's mm. one example. Um, it could be that some people just want to to have validation that they're hearing uh, a the messages that they think they're hearing. Mm-hmm. You know, they want validation for that. Uh, it could be to release some emotional uh, trauma about something that they don't know what it is. They feel like it's maybe a block. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's never a block from outside. It's always a block from inside. You know, we're the ones blocking it. So sometimes it's like you can't see through the tree. It's right because you're the one, you know, you're, you're one of the trees. Mm-hmm. So um, it kind of helps you have a little insight into what it is that you don't want to look at. Uh, if somebody's making a big decision in their life, um, it helps to kind of walk through some of the obstacles that, that the Akashic records might say um, they don't need to worry about or they should worry about. Um, you know, it could be anything in life. What, what, it, what it isn't about is, is 3D existence. It's really more of a soul, uh, a, a soul reading, if you will. Um, mm. because it ha- mm. has to do with with you and your relationship to those people around you, to life, and to in this world. And it'll only tell you what you're ready to hear. So sometimes they say, you know, we, we can't answer that question. But that's pretty rare that that happens. But it, it has happened. Uh, mm-hmm. They will only tell you what you're ready to hear. So will it so in terms of um we talked about the ascension or what's going on right now with 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 people with humanity does it give us any revelations in the in the what's happening and what we can look forward to Uh yes uh actually really really great uh information I mean I uh I've heard I don't always remember uh, in fact I rarely remember I shouldn't I should say that I rarely remember specifics but I, I do remember trends and um, trends. The trends are that we are moving into this fifth dimensional energy and they do talk about it in those terms. You know, we're mm-hmm. moving out of the third dimension. We're moving through the fourth and the fourth dimension is going to be very volatile, very uncomfortable, very much uh, a for some a, um, you know, a, a near death experience kind of thing, you know, where, you know, it's, it's going to be a very bumpy ride through the fourth mm-hmm. dimension. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and that's true for our own, in our own, uh, because we are moving from the third dimension. We as a soul, each and every soul mm-hmm. moving from a third dimension through the fourth into the fifth. So we're, you know, as we talked about before from a microcosm, we're going through the same thing. And then we are, as you said, all going through it at the same time. When we get to the fifth dimension, and not everyone will make it there, because you do have to be able to feel and see the higher vibrational uh, um, uh, energy. You know, you have to be able to live in that higher vibration, which is, you know, not fear, not anxiety, not anger. You know, those lower vibrations cannot survive they 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 love the fourth the third and the fourth dimension but they cannot survive the fifth mm. so it's a matter of us working through and becoming these higher level um experiencing this higher level vibration which is love compassion peace joy uh, you know where we're helping each other it, it, they've shown us uh, my different clients you know where our, the client is doing something completely different than they were doing, but everything they're doing now is what led them to do this work mm-hmm. because we're going to be doing things for each other with each other. It's going to be a beautiful, I've seen the pictures because I see in my Akashic records, I mostly see pictures, but I also get words, uh, you know, you know, the, the words come through, mm-hmm. but sometimes I just get pictures. And so I, try to explain oh sorry just had a huge weird rainstorm come Mm in um i wonder if that's a sign of something (laughs) anyway uh anyway there is so so we're moving into this fifth dimension together uh 
But again, not everybody can get there because you have to be able to move yourself out of this lower realm anxiety and up into this beautiful, um, you know, place where you can hold, where you can hold the higher uh, vibrational energies mm -hmm. for longer periods of time. So it's, it's going to be beautiful. We are going to go through some bumps. It's going to be a little uncomfortable. Yeah, well, I think we can all see the discomfort now. Um, and, you know, and I, 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 I keep hearing this, and then, and people will say, "Well, it doesn't look like we're we're getting any better. We still have, you know, all these things that are going on." But I think that's the that's the bumpiness you're talking about, and that's kind of the, the separation because there's some people that want to hold on to where we are, and then there's yes. other people pulling the other way. So you're, there's this tension that's happening. That's right, and we're all going to come together. That's, I've seen that clearly. We're all going to come together. Now, there's going to be some that, that simply can't make it, and they will choose to leave this realm. They, they just will. They'll mm -hmm. choose, you know, either they'll choose or it'll be chosen for them uh, mm -hmm. to leave this realm. Uh, and, but generally speaking, we are moving into this beautiful place that is, uh, and it, it, but it is going to get a little worse before it gets better. You know, the, this, it's going to be a little more chaos. And, um, but we have to trust and have faith. That that's where we're heading because that's what we get out of all of this is, is when we are focused on the divine connection, you know, and that this is all part of why we're here. There's not anyone here at this moment that wasn't supposed to have a part in all of this. I mean, you specifically, you know, very much so, right. you know, in right. what you're doing, uh, there and you would not be doing this without having lost your beautiful daughter. I think so it's that's the gift. Yeah, I, I, I love what you said there. I think it's really important because we can feel like we can get so beat down by life, like this is a punishment, or at best, this is random. And, you know, it, you, you, but we have to understand this is a special time. We all are here for a special reason. That, that changes your mindset about everything. It does. It really, really does. Because that, that's why some people think, how could she possibly see that losing her son was, was a gift? Well, it wasn't about losing my son. The gift was that this was the plan and that this was, and he's, I didn't lose him. Right. He's not physically standing with me here, but he has been doing everything that he can to help humanity from where he is. And I believe that he thought he could do better there than here. Mm -hmm. He did the best he could do from here. And then it was time to go. I believe that he was a higher, many of our children, our starseed children were from higher realms, right. higher dimension. And that they came here, came down dimensions in order to be here, which is why it was so difficult for them to, to manage well because they just came from these beautiful places right and mm -hmm. and now they're stuck in this place yeah yeah, <laughs> not yeah. So cool, right? right um and and so you know they they came they could only handle it for so long they did the best they could and and but if you see it in that way and sure it it is a choice you know i to me it's the truth it is the truth. So I didn't just decide, oh, I'm going to believe that story. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not what happened to me uh, because I like facts. And even though I was always spiritual, um, you know, I, I have faith to a point, but I have to have something that gives me the feeling that that faith is not just, you know, Pollyanna ish. Right. 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 So it's taken me some time to get there. And now I am certain that all of this is a divine plan. We are in the middle of a divine plan and we have to go through some bumps, but we have to more so believe that where we're going is worth it all. It's so worth it all that, that, it, 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 that it's going to be, you know, this, this place where we all care and serve one another, mm -hmm. where we truly love. And, you know, right now I don't feel like, you know, I have, 87 year old mother that I care for she is getting scammed left and right you know people trying to scam her right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
computer and mail and you, you name it, trying to, you know, it's that kind of energy that is no longer going to be here. That energy is going to go away. And I'm excited for that time, you know, yeah. to, you know, so anyway, that's yeah. how I that's great. I, the, I, I, I love that. And um, yes, there is, there is, I can, we can feel the tension that's going on now and we yes. can feel people that are saying we're ready to move forward. And we can feel people saying, no, actually we like, we like to go back. We, we don't, not only do we not want to go forward, let's go, let's go back. So yeah. no um, there's, going back. there's a, there's a lot of that going on. But Tina, tell people. Um, so we talked about your, your heart math and how people can get more information on your website. So tell yes. people, make sure everybody knows what your website is and what it is that you offer. Okay, well, it mostly, you know, my what I offer, uh, you know, uh, is my Akashic Records. Um, and I believe that we're going to have a link here for, for them mm -hmm. uh, with a little discount. Um, but Ak Akashic Records is, is what I do, um, you know, besides my just reading my books and doing my spiritual work, I do Akashic Records. And... Uh, but what I'm passionate, really, really passionate about as well is getting the information out for heart-focused breathing to help people handle, especially what's coming, right? For us to stay balanced and resilient throughout this, mm -hmm. you know, because it is a soul journey. So we can, you know, not one little exercise or practice is going to change everything, but it is really going to help, especially while you're trying to get through your soul journey um, to that other side. So. Heart focused breathing is is a pretty simple um, practice uh, that you can do two or three, four times a day, three three to five minutes. I am very passionate about everyone knowing how to do this, especially children uh, mm -hmm. at school. Yeah. Uh, it, it's so simple, uh, but they need they need something to help them. Uh, the, our our little ones. So I really like them, and there's some books and things like that 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 they can you can get for your children um but anyway uh i i give i have a pdf which i think is also going to be on this link uh with you but it's on my website which is healing yeah. and and so there and and then it once the second wednesday of every month i do a free uh session on zoom uh where you can sign up and for free and you just come on and for half an hour we work on the uh heart focused breathing um uh practice and we kind of go through some questions because i will say when i was i was still in heavy grief when i started this uh going down the heart uh heart math road mm -hmm. um i could not find that joy i could not find any of those things mm -hmm. and so I, I i i talk a little more about that especially um you know if i if i'm doing an akashic records session with someone i know that lost someone, uh, you know, a parent, a, you know, husband, wife, child, I go a little deeper in how to find, you know, to try to find that joy that, you know, and pretty much you just have to start with peace because you can't find joy and you can't find, you know, happiness and all of that. But if you can find peace, you're there, you're, you've got a foundation anyway. Yeah. So, I love the way you put that. I think that's great. Well, Tina, thanks again for being here today and for sharing um, sharing Chase with us and, and your journey yeah. and uh, what you have to offer to the world. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And it was wonderful speaking with you. Yeah. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Take care. Hey there. If you liked this episode, come on over and talk about it. Let me know what you liked. If you didn't like this episode, come on over and talk about it. Let me know what you didn't like. Go to grieftogrowth.com slash community and look for talk about the podcast. I'll see you there.